Hello, welcome. My name is Libby Bonnell. I'm Assistant Director of Admissions at Grand Valley, and I'm delighted to have all of you here with us today. I would like to introduce your presenter, but before I do, just some quick housekeeping. I'll be behind the scenes while he presents about the Honors College. So feel free to use the Q&A feature. I'll keep your questions private and I will respond privately to you through the Q&A. And then at the end, I'll see if there's any other questions we haven't addressed yet. And again, in keeping um, your privacy intact, if I do see any um, awesome questions I would like the entire audience to see, I will share those, but still, of course, keeping your privacy intact. So I'm excited to answer some questions while our wonderful speaker shares all the delightful information about the Frederick Meyer Honors College. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Director Roger Gillis. Thank you, Libby. Yeah, so I'm Roger Gillis. I'm the Director of the Honors College here at Grand Valley State University. And what I'd like to do is to use the three words of our motto, live, learn, lead, to talk about the Honors College and um, kind of go through uh, the experience that we have here. So I'm gonna share my screen so that you can see my presentation here. And we will start with uh, the word live. And obviously um, this is one of the most important things that you're doing here at Grand Valley State University is living with other folks, living with the students. We have three, I'm sorry, we have two opportunities for uh, living centers for uh, students here. We have learning and living centers that were built in 2008. That's the Frederick Meyer Honors College Niemeyer Living, Learning and Living Center uh, on, in our, our main area. And this is, uh, offers a combination of student living area, uh, faculty offices, classroom spaces, and social and academic spaces for gatherings. Uh, this was built in 2008, as I say, and um, it offers apartment style living. So students all have their own bedrooms. They have two bedroom apartments and four bedroom apartments and everybody has their own kitchen to work with too. In 2016, we added space in the Holton Hooker Learning and Living Center. Um, this, uh, we don't have the entire building uh, dedicated to honors, but we have a floor dedicated to honors. This is more traditional cluster style living. So students share a bedroom and they have a kind of a communal kitchen that they share down the hall, uh, bathrooms shared down the hall. Um, but it's, uh, it's a great way to experience the full freshman experience while still being part of the Honors College. And we do have some classroom space um, that Honors College uses in that building as well. Um, most importantly, I think with the word live, uh, we try very hard to offer opportunities for students to uh, study in spaces and with other students, to gather together informally with other students, and also to gather together with our classes. So we try to uh, get outside, uh, try to gather together the entire first year class if we can, and um, really build on the community. And I think one of the most important things about being in the Honors College is that you are surrounded by a lot of great students that can uh, really support you in your academic and social endeavors. We have, uh, so an industrial kitchen here in the Niemeyer Learning and Living Center where students can do some cooking for themselves or for their class. Uh, we have uh, large multi-purpose spaces where we can uh, sponsor activities, both social and academic uh, fun activities. Uh, this group in the lower left here, I believe we're uh, decorating doorstops. We're trying to encourage students to keep their doors open so they can get to know each other. And um, we gather them together so they can uh, decorate some uh, doorstops for the rooms. And it's not unusual, as you see on the right, uh, for honors faculty to invite their small classes back to their uh, houses for um, an evening of uh, food and, and socializing. So we really try to create that kind of residential college um, social feel here in the Honors College. And during COVID, we've tried very hard too to maintain that community building. Um, we can gather in small groups, of course, but we, those are limited opportunities. So we're trying to uh, replicate as best we can a virtual experience uh, this year. We've um, introduced a series of yoga classes that a local teacher is offering. Um, students have uh, shared videos, as you see on the left side here, of um, 
hidden spaces on campus where you can uh, study or socialize or just see neat things. We've had a series of uh, student reactions to music actually chosen by me, uh, old music from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and they kind of react to that music for the first time on screen. Um, my wife and I did a few cooking videos where we offered some cheap and easy ways to uh, make food in your kitchen. And in the upper right here, you see uh, we, uh, the mayor of Grand Rapids, Rosalind Bliss, uh, hosted a session where two honor students who are actually running for local office this, this month, um, actually next month, um, talked about their political aspirations and what they hope to accomplish in office. The most important word is the, the one in the center, learn, in our live, learn, lead motto. Essentially, what the Grand Valley State University Honors College is, is, a, is an, uh, an alternative to our general education program. And what that means is that um, if you are part of the Meyer Honors College and you complete the Honors College curriculum, you do not have to complete the regular general, uh, Grand Valley State University general education program. Um, so like the general education program, the honors curriculum is open to all students from all majors. And so it, it is functioning as a general education program. The regular general education program is 35 to 41 credits uh, out of the 120 credits that are required overall to graduate. And that means that it's about, you know, a third of the credits that you take uh, in the regular general education program. The honors program is a little smaller, so it's 27 credits, roughly a little less than a quarter of the overall credits needed to graduate. And what that means is that we can, we can do more in, in fewer classes. We kind of compress things and make it an exciting curriculum. Um, and it allows uh, our honor students to graduate uh, certainly on time. The, as you can see, the average graduation rate for an honor student is 3.8 years, which means they start in August of their first year and they tend to graduate in April or May of their fourth year. We feature fabulous faculty and I'll talk more about them in a minute. Small classes, uh, Grand Valley State University as a whole has small classes, but uh, the Honors College has even smaller classes. These numbers in the lower right are actually from last year. This year is a little strange, so I can't really cite uh, what we have going on now. But um, as you can see, the average class size in Honors is about 20 students. And uh, probably the main feature that separates us from the general education program, besides the great students that we have, uh, would be the fact that we are not a subject-based or disciplinary curriculum, but rather a topical curriculum. It's an interdisciplinary curriculum that focuses on issues, large world issues and national issues that we explore from a variety of disciplinary perspectives. So we have courses in food issues, in civil rights, in, um, in regions like the Middle East or Africa. Uh, we have uh, courses on design thinking. We have uh, uh, courses on um, uh, the, the, the formation of the planet and big history. So large topics that we can study from a variety of, inter, of disciplinary perspectives. Uh, I said before, we have fabulous faculty. Uh, Grand Valley has great faculty and the Honors College is lucky enough to be able to kind of choose uh, faculty from around campus. Not only that are scholars in their field, and that's really important that they're accomplished scholars, but also that they're dedicated to that kind of general education approach. As I said, our students come from all different majors. So our classes are filled with students from various majors with various career interests. So these teachers are able to kind of harness the variety of interests that students have and offer a really dynamic curriculum that focuses on big issues as opposed to just narrow, top, narrow disciplinary uh, topics. They are also committed to active learning. So our students get uh, active in the classroom and get outside of the classroom. And we really try to take a hands-on approach to our topics. We get outside the classroom with uh, co-curricular activities like taking uh, trips to Detroit, to the Institute of Art, or uh, an East Asia class goes down to Chicago to eat in a, 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 an Asian restaurant, uh, go to museums all over the state and local area. Um, our students get out to natural areas to study uh, geology or to look at uh, the water or to uh, just explore the trails and talk to their teachers and fellow students as they do so. Uh, sometimes uh, classes like our design thinking class grows into a kind of a selected class trip. Uh, in this case, uh, these students went out to Palo Alto 
to explore Google headquarters and other features of that uh, Silicon Valley area. And we also provide as a honors college co-curricular programming. So uh, I mentioned before, Mayor Bliss, she is actually a part-time faculty member here. She's the endowed chair in entrepreneurship and innovation here in the honors college. Um, last year, she gave a lecture in which she talked about leadership. Um, when prominent speakers come to campus, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's a, uh, of course, a famous astrophysicist, um, we, as an honors college, are sometimes able to get kind of private time for our students to talk with those um, eminent speakers. Uh, last year, also, we sponsored a cybersecurity panel where we brought in two experts to talk about issues and dangers related to social or, so, uh, cybersecurity. Um, and uh, it's a great way for students to uh, supplement their career and academic interests and also to develop new interests. We also have regular alumni panels. We have some great alumni in the Honors College. Um, the woman on the left here is Juanita uh, Bocanegra, who is actually currently running for a judge in Ottawa County. Uh, this was before she was running, but she was talking about her career as an attorney. And in the lower left there, we have, uh, with a microphone, is Michael Judd, who is a director out in Hollywood for TV and movies. So he talked about his path from Grand Valley to Hollywood. The Honors College um, does not require, but really encourages study abroad. Uh, about 40% of our students study abroad at some time during their time at Grand Valley in the Honors College. Um, study abroad experiences do count in our curriculum. Up to six credits of that 27 can be counted towards study abroad. We have several um, honor specific study abroad programs, including one to um, Nicaragua and to Haiti and to Ghana. Uh, we also have a new one that's going to Israel and Jordan that's going to start this year. Um, but there are hundreds of opportunities for honors college students to travel abroad uh, with other programs around campus. Here's some students in Haiti. And like all students at Grand Valley, Honors College students have opportunities for research and performance and presentation at conferences. Um, as you might guess, Honors College students uh, do these things at a higher rate than the larger population. They get inspired by seeing other students do it, and uh, it's a great way to develop a resume. Um, in fact, one way to look at the Honors College is that you are more likely to develop a fantastic resume by being, in, by being involved in all these activities on campus throughout your tenure here at Grand Valley. But the main thing, as I indicated before, is the great students. And what you're doing is you're surrounding yourself with the best possible classmates, with the best possible roommates, with the students who are going to inspire you to be your best self. Um, every class is filled with great conversation, uh, students who have done their work, who are ready to do group projects, who are eager to uh, get together outside of class to uh, talk about papers and to help each other with projects. So it's really what you're, what you're buying into with the Honors College is that cohort of students that you're going to spend your entire three or four years with. So I'll talk about a few of those students. That's the best way to introduce them, I think. Um, I'll talk about several students who graduated last April in, in 2020. This is Krista. She was a biomedical sciences major and an environmental studies minor, an interesting combination. Uh, as you can see, she was a Cook Leadership Academy fellow. The Cook Leadership Academy is uh, housed in the Hauenstein uh, Center for Presidential Studies here on campus. Um, they have a rigorous interview process. They select 50 or 60 students every year to be part of the um, academy. Um, they get paired up with mentors around the uh, local area from business or from government or from nonprofits. And um, they also participate in a lot of activities. So it's a great leadership uh, kind of uh, developmental process and Krista was active with that. Uh, you can see that she studied abroad in Belize and she interned at Northwestern University in Chicago. And her honor senior project, really interesting in that every student in the Honors College uh, kind of culminates their experience with an honor senior project individually designed under the uh, uh, tutelage of a faculty member on campus. Her project was a proposal to implement stormwater art in the stormwater system here on campus. So it combined her interest in environmental studies with her apparent interest in art. So it was a really interesting one. Um, and she's now preparing for graduate school in medical anthropology. 
This is Jessica. Jessica graduated last year too. She was really active on campus. Um, you can see she was president of the campus activities board, which means she was uh, instrumental in bringing speakers and performers and uh, artists to campus. Um, she was involved with the Laker Programming Council. She was the a coordinator of Family Weekend, bringing families and uh, uh, family members to campus to visit their students. She studied abroad in London. Um, and she was one of five graduating seniors last year to earn the Thomas M. Sequoia Award for Outstanding Contributions to the Campus Community. She was a marketing major. This is Dominique. She studied integrative studies here on campus. Um, she was really active as an ambassador. She was active in the uh, student orientation program for admissions. Um, she was also an orientation leader for the Black Excellence Orientation Group. She uh, spent three of her four years here as a resident assistant in the Housing and Residence Life Office, which means that she um, uh, was a leader on campus, living on a floor, and guiding and mentoring the students in that, uh, in that residence hall. She was the first ever recipient of the Gail R. Davis First Generation College Student Emerging Leader Award. So she was um, definitely recognized on campus as a campus leader. And in fact, uh, before she graduated last April, she was um, uh, one of two winners. The other was actually also an honor student of the most prestigious undergraduate award we give to students, which is the Glenn A. Niemeyer Award. You'll recognize that name as the Niemeyer Learning and Living Center. Uh, for well-rounded students who demonstrate excellence in both the classroom and in extracurricular activities that enrich the lives of others. This is Colin, a biomedical sciences major. Uh, as you can see, he was focused on uh, medicine. He was the president of the pre-med club. He was also uh, an effective ambassador, both for the freshman orientation program and the Honors College. He was a research lab student supervisor, so he developed a lot of firsthand uh, experience and training in working in a lab. Uh, during his whole four years here, he was an emergency medical technician outside of the university. And you can see here that he served abroad in a mobile health clinic in Tanzania. Great experiences. Um, you can imagine that someone like Colin was a distinguished uh, applicant to medical schools and he's currently in medical school, and I, I can't remember if it's uh, which of the two medical schools that he was uh, most interested in he ended up going to, so I didn't put that in writing here, but he did make it to medical school. Alexis, a uh, major in cell and molecular biology. You can see that she was uh, one of uh, uh, 40 or 50 uh, annual Phi Kappa Phi freshman honorees that are part of our freshman class, um, and uh, that's the National Honor Society for most uh, universities and colleges around the country. She was uh, active in our genetic, genetic counseling student organization, uh, uh, worked in the Kent County uh, Children's Advocacy Center. And uh, interestingly, she was part of a design thinking team that sprung out of a class here at Grand Valley in the Honors College uh, that helped us research and revise the uh, honors curriculum. And this semester, we're implementing some of the ideas that those students came up with to help uh, make the Honors College curriculum even better. Every year, every department on campus is able to designate one student as the top student of, the, of their department. And Alexis was named the top student in the cell and molecular biology program two years running, her junior year and her senior year. And as you can see, she's currently pursuing a master's degree. Uh, Joe, uh, human resources major was, uh, as you can see, active in the, an a cappella student group, uh, also in campus ministry in the Asian Student Union in his field of human resource management. Um, but uh, he really capped off his time by uh, singing solo at our new president's, uh, President Mantella's inaugural celebration uh, last year. And it was, it, it's a video that went, really went viral. He did a fantastic job. And the last student I'll talk about here is Kaylee Thomas, who is an exercise science major and a psychology minor, um, also very active in the honors program, part of our mentor council, mentoring. Uh, we have about 60 students every year that mentor our entering class uh, in small groups. Um, but, and she studied abroad in Haiti, which is important, and that's where that photo comes from. But 
I wanted to share the quotation that she shared with us when she was leaving, which was that her greatest accomplishment at Grand Valley was just how much she grew during her time here. And she did that by pursuing every opportunity she could, challenging herself to grow beyond the classroom and gaining experiences that are going to uh, value, uh, serve as a value to her uh, for the rest of her life. And I think really that's what it's all about is to come to, the, to come to Grand Valley, come to the Honors College and see it as an opportunity to grow and to do it along with all these great students like the ones I've just kind of summarized. It's easy to apply to the Honors College. All you have to do is uh, first gain admission to Grand Valley as a whole, and then go to our website. And we have some, uh, some kind of rough guidelines. I wanna emphasize that our admission, admissions process is holistic. So we're looking at a student as a, as a whole person and not just as a, a set of static numbers. Uh, like Grand Valley this year, we are not requiring the ACT or SAT. Uh, we're happy to look at your application if you feel like you are the kind of student that would like to surround themselves with the best students on campus and also to be uh, active in your classes and to make the most of your education. So do consider applying if you feel like this is a place for you. I also would just want to encourage you to come visit us sometime in the Niemeyer Learning and Living Center. We're happy to show you around and introduce you to a student or two and talk more in more detail about the curriculum. So thank you very much for attending today and I look forward to meeting you sometime in the future. Thank you, Director Gillis. And I believe we've answered all the questions in the Q&A. So we appreciate everyone attending and, and have a wonderful evening.